Here's a summary of our first class, rectilinear motion of a particle. We start out with a couple of basic uh, definitions. First of all, defining what a particle is. Uh, it's an object where the size and shape are not really important. Only the mass is going to be important here. And so the motion of a particle is simply translation between points. A rigid body, on the other hand, which we'll look at later, uh, can translate as well as rotate, and so its size and shape are going to be important as well. But in the beginning, we're only looking at particles. And we're also looking at just the kinematics, which is just the study of motion. What's the relationship between position, velocity, and acceleration? Again, a little bit later, we'll expand that to kinetics, where we'll look at what forces are causing that motion. So a couple of fundamental uh, definitions, con fundamental concepts here are the definitions of velocity and acceleration. Velocity is the rate of change of position. And so we can write that as velocity being the time derivative of the position s. And again, it's a vector equation, position and velocity, both having uh, magnitude and direction. Acceleration, the rate of change of velocity. So again, we have a uh, equation here that the acceleration is the time derivative of the velocity. Now we're going to be looking at the beginning of motion simply along a straight path and so we really don't have to uh, uh, carry through the vector uh, notation here as long as we remember that uh, a positive will be in the um, uh, usually the, to the right and, and negative to the left if we're talking about a horizontal scale. So we write these one-dimensional equations as scalar. Um, velocity being ds over dt and acceleration being dv over dt. Now again, if we do have a horizontal path, then a lot of times we'll just use uh, x instead of s. s is just a, a general variable that can apply al along a curved path as well as along a straight path. Okay, now the last two equations that we came up with can be combined to eliminate time, and you have this form ads equals vdv. That'll turn out to be an important equation that we'll use later on in the next class uh, where we have acceleration given as a function of position or as a function of velocity. But for now, we'll, we'll uh, not use that one today. So here's an example problem. We've got the acceleration as a function of time. We're told that the uh, particle is initially at rest, which means its velocity is equal to zero. And we want to find its uh, velocity or its speed at t equals 5 seconds, and also the distance it travels over 5 seconds. So we start with our definition of acceleration, and we can uh, write that as dv be equal, equal to a dt, and we just have to integrate that. Now when we integrate it, we can either do it as a definite integral, in which case uh, we'll have a velocity at this specific time will be our answer, but uh, a lot of times we'll need the velocity, uh, excuse me, an equation for the velocity as a function of time, in which case we want to do an indefinite integral instead. And we're going to need that, so we'll do it that way. And of course, when we do that indefinite integral, we end up with a constant of integration. And that constant of integration is simply the initial velocity. In this case, we're told it's at rest at the beginning, and so our initial velocity is going to be zero. And to find the position, of course, you can plug in 5 seconds to find what the velocity is. To find the position, we start with that equation of velocity equals ds over dt. We integrate ds to find uh, uh, the position at any point in time. And again, substitute in your value of uh, 5 seconds to find the position. And that will be the uh, distance traveled as long as the particle didn't change direction. We'll work a problem uh, like that in the, uh, in the next class. So a lot of the problems we work, though, will have constant acceleration. And that makes the integration very easy, of course. Uh, integration acceleration gives you simply v equals at plus the initial velocity. Integrate one more time to get this expression for the position. And one more equation, if we um, start with ads equals vdv with, for a constant acceleration, we come up with this last equation that gives us the relationships of the velocity to position without having to find the time as an intermediate step. So six fundamental equations, if you will, that we use to solve the problems. So here's one with a constant acceleration. We know we're going 40 feet per second, hit the brakes, 
and decelerates at a constant rate of 5 feet per second squared. Well, deceleration, so that just means a negative acceleration, initial velocity being 40 feet per second. We can just plug into our equation uh, that we came up with earlier. We know that when we stop, the velocity is equal to zero, and so from that we can solve for the stopping time, which of course in this case is going to be 8 seconds. We can then take that value of time, plug into this equation, and find uh, find the position s after five after eight seconds. I haven't worked it out there, but that would be the, the distance that uh, is traveled. So in other words, that is the stopping distance. Uh, but we'll point out if we didn't need to know the stopping time and only needed to know the distance, then we could use this equation. We know everything except for the final value of s, and we can solve directly for that without finding the time. So in the next class, we're going to keep working with those same six fundamental equations we came up with this time, but we will uh, pay particular attention to using this equation ADS equals VDV, uh, where we have some problems with A given as a function of position instead of time, or acceleration given as a function of velocity. And we'll also come up with at least one example problem with a more difficult uh, integration where we'll use a numerical solution.